Hey guys, what's up? It's Mickey here, and uh, I'm here at the Show Me Reptile Shop in Troy. I'm, I'm here with uh, our manager, Zach, and we're going to kind of talk about the Show Me Reptile Shop and, uh, you know, what we're trying to do with it, you know, with them within the community. Uh, so, Zach, how long how long have you been around Show Me Reptiles? Um, as far as I know, since the beginning. Talking about shows or the shops? Just the shows and, and the shops, yeah. So, so pretty much since the beginning, Zach started out vending uh, our shows, you know, and he's kind of grown up with, you know, what we're, we're trying to do within the community. So what is our primary focus whenever it comes to these stores, Zach? Uh, to offer a platform to overall better um, husbandry and general keeping of pretty much everything that's being kept. Yeah, so like you know, setting our reptiles up for success whenever they, they find new homes, uh, you know, making sure that they're getting really good care here in store, you know, kind of inspire and show people how, how, how they can keep reptiles too. Yeah. Right. I mean, what's, what's your favorite thing about working at a store? Um, having that platform. One of my favorite things is someone asking a question about why is my dragon not eating? And we give them their answers. They take stuff home. Uh, they come back three days later and he's eating again, he's moving again, and it's um, that constantly reminds me that this is why we're doing that. Yeah. That's why we're doing this. Right? Yeah, why we're doing this. Yeah, I, I think one of my favorite things too is, you know, kind of showing people the new, newer ways of, of doing things, you know, because sometimes we'll get people in here that have been keeping reptiles for 20 years and they're just, you know, they're doing it how it was done 20 years ago and we're able to show them, like, hey, you need this this good lighting for UVB and supplements. And that is one thing we definitely want to push uh, lighting and dietary needs are changing so drastically, so fast and trying to stay ahead of that is very important. Um, and we're seeing it. I mean, just in the last, what decade we've seen um, captive averages of most of the more common species, almost double uh, lifespan wise, you know, just because of understanding the lighting and, and understanding a little better on their internal and dietary needs. And, um, Again, having that platform to help people understand that is, um, I think, very important to the hobby and is, is one of my favorite things about this. Yeah, I think, you know, setting the keeper up for success is also going to help the longevity of that animal. Uh, you know, so let's talk about a little bit of the vetting process that we go through whenever we, we get new animals in to the, to the stores. Yeah, normally uh, we'll mark a, you know, not available. We want to observe everything for several days and, and understand their eating habits and everything you know, to make sure, um, again, to set keepers up for success, you know, you can do it all right and just have something that's a little off from the beginning and it not be conducive to the animal or the keeper long term. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so making sure everything's eating, drinking, <clears throat> pooping real well before we find homes for them. Make sure it's functioning properly. So, you know, let's, let's talk about like our pricing. I know we're, we're very, very affordable on our feeders. Uh, why do we do that, Zach? Uh, to, to keep it affordable, to keep a variety available and to keep animals, uh, a lot of people get comfortable. It's easy to keep superworms. So you just buy a bunch of them and then that's the end of it. You feed only that to your animal, right? That's gonna cause, you know, fatty issues and, and several other things down the line and trying to push, um, affordable availability of variety is uh again setting everyone up for success long term now now why don't we keep a, a ton of animals in the store like you go into some stores and they have literally hundreds of animals what do you think we have in here maybe 40 animals 50 animals yeah tops um um space i mean you you can't get that that quality of information or that quality of comfort by stuffing a bunch of animals in one room, you know? Yeah. You can't imagine a team can tell you the um, individual attitude of every animal in a store when there's that many of them. You know, we, we take time out of our day to, to tong feed or hand feed virtually everything in here that's receptive to that kind of behavior. And, and we, we know who's doing what. Yeah. I mean, almost each animal in here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like having a, a smaller amount of animals in the store because they, they do get that one-on-one -on -one attention and you know they are set up uh, in, in nicer enclosures. I mean, I would love to be able to set everybody up in even bigger enclosures. And you know, next week we're gonna do a build on, on a bigger enclosure mm -hmm. for, some, for some store animals. That's gonna be uh, super exciting. But 
you know, I, I think showing people the care here is, uh, it, it translates to better care at home, you know, so the better we have animals set up here, you know, it's not like you buy an animal here and you're going to get it out of a plastic tub or in, in an enclosure with 30 other animals. Because right. <laughs> that's what people think whenever they see that here, they think it's okay to do there. So then that's when you get like people putting four and five bearded dragons in a, in a 40 gallon breeder tank. Yeah, definitely. Um, and being transparent about that, like we do have five dragons in one enclosure, but we couldn't offer variety if we housed every dragon individually. Dragons would be the only thing on this wall. Right. Um, and people are very receptive to that. They understand you just give them, you know, tell them. And again, with the displays, even the stuff that doesn't have multiples, we're creating several gradients, several temperature zones, a couple different areas for UVB intake that they can regulate on their own um, and giving those ideas for people to take home as well. Yeah, so so t tell me about the newer keepers that are coming into the stores. They're they're just coming in. There, a lot of people are already very educated on the animals. Yeah, I um, I think uh, uh, YouTube and and stuff like that has made a great uh, um, outreach, uh, especially over the past decade or so. Um, there's definitely give or take some twisted info out there, but. Um, the majority of people coming in are mostly prepared and a lot of the times it's younger cats with their parents and the, the the kids are telling the parents what they need and stuff before I can even help them you know it's great it's really cool to see that kind of stuff and it's um, um, gives me a lot of hope for the future of the hobby definitely awesome awesome well thanks Zach and that's it